Hi, Maria here. Welcome to my channel. Today, I'm excited to share with you all the amazing fragrances that I wore for the week. But before we get started, if you haven't subscribed, please feel free to hit that button. Join the Weird and Wonderful family. I would love to have you part of the community. We are a fantastic community. I love, love, love what we're building here. So thank you so much for being a part of it. And without further ado, let's get into this. So the first fragrance that I'm going to share with you, seriously, I was in love with myself all day. Like, it was so amazing and it's Flora Botanica by Balenciaga. This one is discontinued so I'm gonna leave it linked down below. They have it on FragranceNet. I leave all the fragrances linked down below but I'm also gonna link a dupe for this by Perfume Parlor because it's a really decent dupe. It has a little more mint in it uh, but it's still a fantastic fragrance. This one has mint in the opening. It's got cannabis, rose, and carnation in the mid, and then the dry down is vetiver and amber. So basically what I get is this beautiful minty kind of green opening. Smells like you're out in an English garden. It's just amazing, like a dewy English garden. And then you go up to this rose. It's just a brand new rose opening up. There's dew on it and you smell it. That's what you get. So at first, this is like more green and then you start to get this rose developing. The greenness stays throughout the whole entire experience of the fragrance. And I'm addicted to it. I love that minty kind of green opening. I find it so refreshing. I'm so disgusted with myself for not wearing this more. Like now that I've worn it and I loved it, I literally craved it all week. Like I kept on like, you know, I'd sneak a squirt here and there and just kind of be like this because it was so awesome. So I'm gonna wear this tons more. Uh, basically, I, I'm obsessed with it right now, like literally obsessed. <laughs> no, seriously, I, I, what was I thinking and not wearing it? And why is my bottle so empty? Like there's a lot missing from it. So I think I've given a bunch of decants because it doesn't make sense that part of my bottle is gone. And now I'm kind of upset because I love it so much. So anyway, um, I, I'm so happy I have this one. I love the bottle. I think it's funky and cool. Just so unique. But the fragrance, it, okay, I love the bottle. The fragrance inside does not match the packaging. So this, you know, seems kind of modern, kind of funky, a uh, little bit unisex. This fa fragrance is very green, floral, feminine. So I don't quite understand the funkiness of the packaging. It certainly doesn't reflect the scent, but the scent is absolutely beautiful. And I'm so glad I have it. And I just, I'm addicted to that mint. Like I actually want more mint fragrances. So if you guys have a great recommendation for a mint fragrance, please let me know because I love this one. I've smelt lemon mint by Mansara wasn't really thrilled with that. So if you know of some great mint fragrances, please give me some information. Thank you. Okay, moving on. Um, I have this sample that I got from Nisha from Spicy Looks. She's just an amazing human being. Anyway, she gave me this sample of Elixir Pour Femme Essence de Parfum by Roja. This one has a ton of notes. So it has bergamot in the opening, raspberry, rose de mai, peach, violet, heliotrope, ylang ylang, geranium, jasmine and lily of the valley in the mid and then the base is musk vanilla orris cashmere wood violet leaf sandalwood and brett cedar and cinnamon when you first smell this it smells oh it's juicy and delicious okay so when i spray it on my skin the first thing that i got was a rose little bit of fruity rose but mainly rose with quite a lot of powder um and yeah, like as soon as it kind of settles onto the paper even, you get that a, a fairly large burst of powder. Uh, so like the violet, the heliotrope, all of that kind of smells quite powdery. The rose to me, although it's powdery, there's a little bit of a, for, for whatever reason, it feels a little bit aquatic to me, even though that's not listed anywhere. Uh, a little bit of a wateriness, but also that powder. Um, really pretty. I'm not normally into powder, but I actually really like this. And then as it dries down, you start to get this raspberry and peach with just a hint of spice. So for me, uh, when I first put it on, 
I'm like, oh, it's a nice powdery rose. But then as it dried down, that, that fruit came out a lot more and I just absolutely loved it. Like I'm a fruity girl all the way. <laughs> so um, what I did notice was when I put it on within about 15 minutes, I couldn't smell it anymore. And at first I'm like, I guess that doesn't last long. But then uh, I started getting whiffs of it throughout the, the morning and the day. So I'd say this has, it still is an amazing longevity. So it gets about five hours. Basically it becomes a skin scent after about an hour. But then like the, you get these whiffs of the beautiful um, kind of fruity rose. And I just really enjoyed it. I just thought it was so, so pretty. Uh, so yeah, really, really impressed with this Elixir Pour Femme by Roja. The next fragrance I tried was Bitter Peach by Tom Ford. Now, this is another fragrance where I sprayed it all over myself, uh, went about my day, and I thought to myself, where did it go? Like, I couldn't smell it at all. Like, like at all. And I thought, wow, this is terrible performance. But then I wore it again, and I put it on my hand, and like, you know, when I hold my hand down here, I, I couldn't smell it. But I think I go anosmic to certain fragrances. So I think that's really important. Like if you think that it, the longevity just, it, like it just disappears, maybe it doesn't. So this is what happened. I put it on, couldn't smell it again, like smelt it for the first little while, couldn't really smell it unless I went right up to it. Uh, but then I was talking to my son and I said, uh, like, I, and you know, just talking like this. And I said, oh, I want you to smell my perfume. And he said, don't worry, mom, I can smell it. I can smell it loud and clear. And I'm like, really? And he goes, oh yeah, it's really strong. And he wasn't a fan. Uh, but, I, you know, just from moving around, he could smell it. So, uh, you know, there's definitely a lot more potency than I thought. And the other thing is, is I sprayed it on my hand at night and the next morning I could still just faintly smell it. So I think that the longevity is better than I realized. Now this fragrance, it's, it's what it reminds me of. You de I definitely get the peach. So there's this beautiful peach, but it smells like an overripe peach that's almost uh, like it's not that, like it's sweet, but it's not like it doesn't feel like super juicy sweet. So an overripe peach but it's kind of like the peach and the stone all mixed together. So you get that type of smell of peach. Uh, but then there's this kind of beautiful woody dry down that happens. So I'm gonna read you the notes. We have peach, blood orange, cardamom, and heliotrope in the top. The mid is rum cognac, divina, and jasmine. And the base is patchouli, uh, patchouli leaf, vanilla, sandalwood, tonka bean, cashmere, benzoin, uh, styrax, labdanum, and vetiver. So um, yeah, when I first spray it on, I get this beautiful peach, smells a little bit overripe and it smells like you're smelling, like you've taken a big bite out of it and then you're smelling the overripe peach and the stone, that smell is kind of what you get in the opening. Now, when this develops and dries down on your skin, what it reminded me of was if you took a cognac and you, um, put a bunch of overripe peaches and the stones and the peel all in the cognac and then you aged it in some sort of wood barrel. So I get this uh, beautiful kind of boozy uh, peach but also a little bit of that stone which is kind of bitter. Uh, you get all of that uh, kind of um, mixed together. It almost comes across like a tobacco. So there's a little bit of a tobacco edge, I think just with all the mixture of the booze, the peach, and then this woodiness, like of what feels like some sort of barrel that they've aged it in. So they've aged this cognac and the peach with the stones in this barrel, and then you get rid of all of that and you just smell the inside of the barrel. That's what this smells like to me. So I get this delicious kind of boozy woodiness to it. I actually think it's really beautiful. It's warm, there's a bit of sensuality to it, but it feels kind of casual. So I really liked this one. Um, it's pretty pricey though. So I, I kind of would like to try find a dupe for this one because I did like it, but I it, I didn't like it enough to spend the Tom Ford price on it, but I, I actually really liked it. I know it's hit and miss for people. Some people don't really like it, 
Uh, I think it's a really interesting fragrance and I'm so glad I got to try it. And that is thanks to, I think she's Greyhound Mama in the, the uh, comments, but she uh, is a fellow Canadian and she sent me a whole whack of fragrances. So thank you, Deb, for letting me try that because it's just fabulous. So moving on, Hesse gave me a sample of Parfums de Marly's Delina a la Rose. So I was really excited to try this one. So a la Rose, um, it smells more similar to the original Delina than, uh, than the exclusive. Uh, although, yeah, there's a little bit of powderiness to this one. But again, this is uh, more of a watery rose. Uh, it's it's really really nice. I really liked it and I really enjoyed the dry down of it There was a bit of spiciness that came out to play with the, this one uh, The top notes are lychee pear bergamot middle notes are Turkish rose peony watery notes and floral notes uh, And then the base is white musk white musk woody notes and Haitian vetiver So definitely this is more musky to me than the original um Honestly, if you have the original, I wouldn't buy a la rose. They're so similar. This is kind of like a watered down, easier version of Delina. So if you find Delina to be too potent or too much, you may actually enjoy this. Um, it is a fresher version, so I can see this being really great for the summer. Or if you're in a really hot climate, this may be a better option for you than Delina because it ha still has that beautiful Delina DNA. So it smells like Del Delina, just a, a lighter kind of fresher version or a more aquatic version of Delina. But in that dry down, you still get that little hint of spice and it's, it's really nice. But if I had the original, I wouldn't be buying this. So um, if I'm going out to purchase because I live in a cooler climate, I would pick Delina. If you find that uh, Delina is too much for you in the spring summer, uh, the, doing the Ala Rose, like if you love the DNA, may be a good option for you. To me, it's so similar to the original that I wouldn't purchase it. Uh, I can see having either this one and Delina Exclusive or the original Delina and Delina Exclusive. Delina Exclusive is different enough, uh, but yeah, having all three. I don't think it's necessary. So those are my thoughts. Really like it. So glad I got to try it, but won't be buying it. Next fragrance was Boucheron Quatre. I've talked about this one before. Um, I am slowly, like seriously falling in love with this thing so big time. Like I find it addictive. Like I'm finding this one addictive, but I'm also finding this one addictive. It's like a, a citrusy, watery rose. And I'm, I'm really, really enjoying that combination. Like with a pop of, of like tartness. So this one, um, there is Trisardi Donna a la Rose, I think it is, or Rose something. That one's really nice. Kind of trying to decide between those two, like Quatre and that one to purchase. But the um, Elixir Pour Femme by Roja, Parfum de Marly, they all kind of have that rose note. Like that's the major theme actually of, of the majority of these is it has a rose component. Uh, the Quatre one, it just, it's, it's aquatic. It's, uh, I think it's somehow sensual, but romantic, uh, a little bit wistful feeling, um, tart and juicy in the opening. I just love it. Uh, however, I let my husband smell this. He hated it. Like he totally hated it. I couldn't believe it. It, it was the a more harsh response than I've ever heard from him. Like he just thought that it was horrible. So that made me not want to get it. Like I had it in my cart and now I'm like, oh, don't know if I want to do it. The notes are green mandarin orange, bitter orange and currant. Uh, the heart notes are jasmine sandback, Bulgarian rose and patalia. And the base notes are cedarwood, blonde woods and musk. Uh, that's what it says on this one. It has different notes on Fragrantica. I tried to go straight to the site and I couldn't find anything. There's supposedly praline or something like that in this one as well. I, I don't know. That said, I just think it's a beautiful citrusy, juicy rose fragrance. A little bit aquatic. I think it's refreshing. I, I think it's very, very nice. Very beautiful. Um, the longevity isn't amazing, like you're going to get four or five hours out of it. Um, 
that said, it, it, as a skin scent, it lasts a lot longer. So this one I'm still, like, like I said, I'm kind of addicted to it. So likely I will get a full bottle, but we'll see. I'll, I'll finish using this up and then I'll decide. So the last fragrance is a fragrance combo and it again was a massive hit. And it was a mixture of Peach Oyuzu from Kais Perfumes and La Nuit Trésor uh, Nude by Lancome. This combination, well, they're both beautiful fragrances. So this is a peach, kind of a tart peach smell. Uh, but what I find with this one could just be my imagination, but it seems to go uh, from this beautiful peach, kind of a sweet candied peach, uh, into just a slight pastry, like a peachy pastry. Uh, so just bright, refreshing. It makes my mouth water when I smell it. Uh, but then paired with the coconut uh, and the rose from La Nuit Trésor. This was just decadent and amazing. It's just delicious. Like I just love this combination. So it turns the peach one, which is kind of a bright, fun, sl like fruity gourmand into something a little bit more sophisticated and elegant. I love both these perfumes on their own. The peach is kind of a bright, juicy, happy, fruity uh, fragrance that turns a little gourmand. This is not gourmand, so the nude, even though it's a coconut vanilla fragrance, I wouldn't consider it gourmand, uh, but it's a very sophisticated, elegant uh, rendition of coconut. It's sensual, it's, it smells delicious, uh, but it's very classy at the same time. So the mixture of them just kind of, it it kind of juices uh, up the nude and it elevates the peach. Just a really cool combination. So this is awesome. I'm definitely getting a full bottle of this peach Oyuzu. Love it, love it, love it, love it. It's completely different than bitter peach, by the way. Bitter peach is uh, more boozy, warm, a little more sophisticated, obviously. This is just kind of a fun peach and definitely more gourmand in nature. Uh, so you can't compare the two at all. But yeah, this with the nude, just awesome. So that was it. I would say my standouts were the peach and uh, peach and La Nuit Trésor nude combo and Flora Botanica. Like I fell in love with this all over again. So uh, loving my, my new stuff and this oldie. That is it. What was your major standout this week? Did you have any misses? Please feel free to share in the comments. And other than that, I hope you have an amazing week and we'll talk to you soon.